thing is, when I was younger, I hated to read. And my sisters would make fun of me because they loved to read. But I'm happy to say that I have progressed and I actually enjoy reading. What's up, guys? I am Rachel Lindsay, and I'm going to give you a peek into my personal library. Welcome to Shelf Portrait. This is just one of my bookshelves, but it's the most populated one. Okay, so I thought that I would share first these two books, and if you get a close-up, you can see that these books have been through it. Why? Because I've had these for quite a long time. I grew up in a predominantly white school my entire life, and it was so important for my parents to instill in me who I am as a black woman, and they wanted me to be proud about that. Like with George Washington Carver, I knew that he was a black man in our country who invented amazing, amazing things. And then this book, Roll of Thunder, Hear My Cry, um, it's about a young girl, Cassie, and it follows her family, and you just see them fight and stand up for who they are, and they don't back down, and it gives you so much pride as a young black girl because you're following Cassie's story and you're seeing what she's doing. So moving on from childhood, I thought I would move to two of my favorite biographies that I've recently read. Born a Crime by Trevor Noah. This book is so good because it doesn't just teach you about Trevor, Trevor Noah. The book also goes into apartheid and you see what he went through firsthand and you really get a real life experience about it. And it's funny, it's witty, it's such an easy read, but it's so interesting and you learn so much. Also, because duh, Becoming by Michelle Obama. When we first met Michelle Obama, she was the wife of Barack Obama as a senator, as he was running for president. And then we saw her as the first lady and we know what she did historically in that right, but there's so much more to her story. And I really, really related to her in the sense that she was a lawyer. She knew that's what she wanted to be. She went to school, she studied for it. But then as she got into the profession, she wanted to do more with her life. She wanted more from her career. And so she takes a left turn. Now, she didn't go on The Bachelorette or anything like I did, but I relate to her in knowing that there's something that you wanted to do your entire life, but you feel compelled to do something else and that you should be doing something more. So this is such a good read. So many lessons in this book. Essentialism. Now, this is a book I'm only halfway through. It's all about keeping the things that are essential in your life. Once you figure out what those are, and once you make that list, then you can get rid of all the other things that aren't essential to you. Now, have I done that yet? No, but you know, buying it and reading it is the first step. So this is essentialism, and it's the disciplined pursuit of less, something I think we all could do. All right, now, this book, Vox. I have talked about this book a lot and I actually talk about this in interviews because this is very relevant to what's going on in our society. It's a newer take on Handmaid's Tale, which we know is a book from the 80s. So this is Handmaid's Tale times 10, but you're reading this book and you're seeing similarities to things that are happening in our society. And if you don't start paying attention to what's happening, next thing you know, you're gonna be living in this Vox world, but it's so good, it's so intriguing. Um, if you're a fan of The Handmaid's Tale, you will be a fan of Vox by Christina Dolcher. These are two books that I got from exes that I've kept with me. Now, one is by Del Carnegie, and it's How to Win Friends and Influence People. It can help us in every single aspect of our life. And it's simple things like, hey, why don't you just smile at someone? I mean, it's it's truly great. And this book has been around for a long time, but people still read it um, and apply it to workplace, friendships, whatever it may be. So I really like this book. This book is Mercy, Mercy Me. It is The Art, Loves, and Demons of Marvin Gaye, and it is by Michael Eric Dyson. There's so much to Marvin Gaye and how he got in the industry, how he started out with his music and what he progressed to that we see in his later days, and then just the struggles that he had with, with family and growing up in such a strict household. It's very, very interesting. So if you have any love for Marvin Gaye or just Motown or R&B music, this is a great book for you. The Hunting Wives by May Cobb. Now, I came across this book because I interviewed May Cobb um, as, a, as being a correspondent on Extra TV. This is Housewives 
meets East Texas. And I'm familiar with East Texas because it's not too far from Dallas, Texas, where I was born and raised. And the moment you say housewives, you've got me. And this book goes there. It's so good, it's so juicy. You see her go to a small town, but there is nothing small about that town. So that's all I'll say about this because I don't want to give it away, but The Hunting Wives may come. It's a good one. Cast The Origins of Our Discontent. It's by Isabel Wilkerson. This book is so good because it really goes into the caste system, the social caste system that we have in our society and how it impacts so many different things. And then she goes into other caste systems, not just in this country, but she talks about those in Nazi Germany and she talks about the caste system in India as well. And it's just such a good read. And it came out in 2020 when we know that this country was going through a racial awakening. So it was very timely. If you haven't read it yet, this is a book that you should read. And if you have read it, pass it on to someone else. Now, the 1619 Project uh, is created by Nicole Hannah-Jones. You might have listened to it, you might have read it in the New York Times, but this is a collaboration of different essays. It's based off of the original 1619 Project that you probably already know, but it has even more essays in it. I have not started to read it yet, but the moment this came out, I had to grab it. This is my next read. I'm so excited to get into it because these issues are still relevant. And as you know, people are starting to talk about CRT and I don't wanna politicize this video, but I think that it's important to equip yourself with certain knowledge so you understand what is being talked about in the media versus what this project is actually about. Okay, so here we go. Let's answer some questions. What's your favorite genre? I love a good autobiography, but I went through this phase that I love thrillers and suspense. I went through a James Patterson, John Grisham phase. Like I, you could, I couldn't stop. You know, maybe it's because of The Bachelor, Bachelorette, but I love a good, I love a good romantic novel. When is the last time you stayed up all night to read a book? It is In Five Years by Rebecca Searle. And I definitely stayed up all night to finish it. And I didn't put it on my bookshelf because I gave it to someone else to read. And I haven't gotten it back yet. Is there a book that you've never been able to finish? Sapiens for me. <laughs> and it's funny, the first person to tell me about Sapiens was Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis. I remember they came on a date when I was doing The Bachelorette. One of the things they said is that you should learn to read together. And one of the books that was rec recommended was Sapiens. So immediately, of course, I was like, I gotta buy this book. I mean, Mila and Ashton are telling me that this is the book to read. I got it, I haven't been able to finish it. Are you a hard copy or e-reader? This is very easy to me. Call me Carrie Bradshaw from Sex and the City. I love to hold a book in my hand, preferably a hard copy. I love to turn the pages. I love to bend the pages. I love a bookmark. I love the smell of a new book. Do you make notes or highlight lines when you read a book? I shy away from doing that just because it reminds me of what I had to do when I was in law school. So I don't do too much of it, but I'm more, um, I'm more likely to take a picture of the page or to highlight. What's your favorite place to read a book? So I hesitate on reading a book in the bed because I will definitely fall asleep, but I like to read a book like in my office, in this chair. It's comfortable, it's cozy. I like to put my feet up. I like to truly curl up and read a book. Have you ever thought about writing a book? Yes, I have written a book and this book was written with Sofia Quintero and the process, it's rigorous. I, I knew I always wanted to do a book, especially after doing The Bachelorette. It's tough because there's so many things that you want to say, but then at the same time, you have to be careful to tell your story and not tell someone else's business. It's, it's tough to be so open and vulnerable. I mean, people are reading about you and your life and you're inviting them in to judge you and have an opinion on, on what you've done. Some, some things they're gonna like and some things they're not. And yes, you would think that I've done that coming from reality TV, but when you think about it, you know me in a bubble. You only know what I give you or what they give you through editing. You don't know my full story. Well, this is me pouring out my story to you, mistakes that I've made, the good, the bad, it's definitely the ugly. But I have to say, I am loving the finished product and um, I'm so glad it's something that I did. All the blood, sweat, and tears is worth it all when you see your book cover and the pages in between.
Okay, you guys, thank you so much for watching Shelf Portrait. I could have talked to you on and on and on. And I think that shows the power of books. They're so rich, there's so much to it. Yes, back in the day, I used to hate reading. And I'm so glad I outgrew that because I would have been missing so much. You guys, make sure you check out my book. I've, I've plugged it already in this, but make sure you check out Miss Me With That. It comes out January 25th and I hope you guys enjoy it so much. You think you know me, you have no idea until you read this book. And don't forget you guys to subscribe to Marie Claire.